Sponsorship for Biofuel Revolution comes from the following. Becker and Polyakov, serving all of Southwest Florida for more than 25 years, providing legal advice and counsel to businesses, individuals, and community associations. And Recycle X LLC. Author Kurt Vonnegut wrote, We are all addicts of fossil fuels in a state of denial, about to face cold turkey. Here in southwest Florida, a quiet revolution is underway to try to cure that addiction and lead the nation down a new path to energy independence. This is algae. Left unchecked, it can be foul, pristine beaches, decimate sea life populations, wreak environmental havoc, and make life miserable for shoreline dwellers. That's exactly right. Native natural algae out in the wild can really be quite dangerous. Here in Florida, we have red tide that comes from algae. We have all kinds of fish that die, and that's from natural algae out in the environment. And so some algae produce really extraordinarily powerful toxins. Nonetheless, Paul Woods loves algae, but only his algae. This is vegetable oil. It is best known for making French fries and tasty foods like fried chicken and fish. It can also be greasy and messy, when it gets old and overused, it turns rancid and smells bad. But Roy Benton and his father and John Pewig love vegetable oil, used vegetable oil to be exact. In fact, the Bentons buy it in bulk and have thousands of gallons trucked to their plant. The used vegetable oil is brought in by tanker trucks um, uh, through some rendering companies that we've been working with. If Woods, the Bentons, and Pewig are correct, algae and vegetable oil may someday replace gasoline and diesel as the fuels that drive America's cars and trucks. There is a very good chance that we could displace all the oil imports, uh, pretty much all of the oil imports, by other methods. And of the two I'm thinking of are biofuels and solar electricity. Woods, Puig, and the Bentons are in the vanguard of a quiet revolution that is fomenting across southwest Florida. Their paths may be strewn with obstacles and littered with question marks, but these entrepreneurial pioneers are on a quest to develop renewable alternatives to fossil fuels. Woods, with a $200 million technological wonderland spread over 30 acres off Alico Road, Roy Benton and his father in an industrial grade manufacturing facility not far from downtown Port Myers, and Puig in his backyard down in Collier County, one car at a time. My opinion is that uh, there will always be a use for fossil fuels and gasoline, but it will not be as heavy as it is now. In fact, I think transport, traffic, automobile, truck traffic can be completely taken off fossil fuels. I think biofuels and biodiesel is the first step in replacing petroleum oil. As technology grows, I'm sure there will be another source of fuel. Ever since the first Model T rolled off Henry Ford's assembly line in 1908, Americans have nurtured their love affair with their automobiles by burning untold trillions of gallons of petroleum-based fuel, much of it made from imported oil. But with gas prices soaring, supplies dwindling, and national security at stake, the nation started looking for alternatives, like ethanol. It's ironic, first of all, because when the first Model T rolled off the assembly line and the earlier automobiles actually used ethanol. Um, and it was only to later that the oil became cheaper. But now we know the problems with oil with regards to the high price at the pumps, the environmental damage, and also the issue with regards to security throughout the world. Baby beside me at the wheel I stole a kiss at the turn of a mile My curiosity running wild Cruising and playing the radio With no particular place to go
Conventional wisdom holds that oil, fossil fuel, was created from the decomposing bones of dead dinosaurs. But in reality, the world's oil reserves date back about 300 million years, long before Tyrannosaurus rex and Brontosaurus walked the earth. And the source of that oil is, surprisingly, mostly vegetable matter. As long as they're aged enough, fossil fuels essentially are like wine. It's a plant material that's been aged for a very long time and turned into oil or coal. In a sense, they're also biofuels. Fossil fuels is actually the anaerobic decomposition of organic matter, plants, over millions of years and under a great deal of pressure. So the current quest for biofuel alternatives is really a return to a 300 million year old process. The sun does a lot of things to the earth. It warms it and it also grows plants. Using any of the plant materials that can be directly or easily switched to ethanol or to alcohols forms the basis of the biofuels program. Ethanol was once considered the potential savior of U.S. energy policy, and today most gasoline sold in the country contains at least some ethanol, most of that produced from corn. But corn-based ethanol is not without its problems. The problem with corn is not only is it heavily subsidized by the federal government, it requires a tremendous consumption of water, of course, to grow the corn, but it also ends up displacing the actual food crop that corn has represented for years. Then there is the price of ethanol. I think corn ethanol right now is as expensive as gasoline, almost anyways. Uh, we intend to make it a lot cheaper than that. The trouble with all new technologies, really, is that the promise of what it can achieve is usually based on ideal conditions and, of course, making everything work and getting so much demand that the cost of production goes down because of large-scale processing. This hasn't happened in the ethanol industry. As a young college student in 1984, Paul Woods had a dream. Use blue-green algae to produce low-cost ethanol. I invented this process when I was a 22-year-old college student uh, outside of uh, Toronto, Canada, where I was uh, born and raised. For five years, he pursued his dream, running a small art gallery and trying in vain to find a company willing to pick it up and run with it. But Wood's timing was off. The corporate world wasn't ready to embrace what he was proposing. A barrel of oil was under $20 at that time. Uh, fresh water was not a concern all around the world, and certainly very few people had ever even heard of climate change and carbon emissions. And so really the three things that make Algenol important now really had no importance whatsoever in the late 80s. In the meantime, he founded, grew, and sold two successful natural gas brokerages in Canada, one of which he took public. Finally, after years of testing and research, changing times and soaring crude oil prices prompted Woods to revisit his dream. We had a long hiatus until oil hit $50 in late 2005, 2006, and that's when I thought the fundamentals of oil have forever changed and we won't see 10 or 15 or $20 oil ever again. Woods' invention, the concept behind alginol, sounds simple. The algae cell itself takes in carbon dioxide, it takes in water, in our case salt water, and sunlight, we all learned in biology class in high school, photosynthesis converts those three things into sugars. Algae from alginol converts those sugars into ethanol. The culture is stored outside in large plastic bags. With sunlight as the catalyst, the ethanol evaporates to the top of the bags during the day then condenses at night and is collected. The big thing though is, is that creation of the ethanol molecule and the first three stages of separation are all solar powered. That's why we have such a massive cost advantage. How big an advantage? The real goal here is an 85 cents per gallon. Uh, if we can get under a dollar, I'll be super thrilled, but um, the economics look like we should be able to do this for about 85 cents. John Puig's dream about alternative fuel sources began 15 years ago on a farm in northern New England. I used to work on my friend's farm in Vermont, 
And one of my jobs was uh, I helped uh, keep the tractor and equipment running. And my friend began running his tractor on biofuel. Hewig was skeptical about using used vegetable oil instead of diesel fuel. The only thing I could imagine as a trained mechanic was that this would harm the machinery. But Puig also calls himself a pro-environmental person, so he dug a little deeper. Well, I was interested in the idea and we began researching it more. Every step of the way I found used vegetable oil is a better fuel than diesel fuel for machinery. Fast forward and move Puig from Vermont to southwest Florida. Some years later, after I converted to being a believer in used vegetable oil, I started doing my own cars. And then I ended up founding Naples Biofuel, which was a small business that I ran myself, converting cars for people, and I taught people how to convert cars. There are times when I don't make vegetable oil, so I I can run on diesel, um, but I'm financially motivated to keep my vegetable oil production up because five cents a gallon versus four dollars a gallon. But for John Puig, running, running his car on vegetable oil was more than just a business opportunity or a way to save money. It was a mission, a lifestyle, a crusade. If we want to change the system and provide more secure energy, we're accountable to change our own consumption and our own ways. But when the economy tanked, so did John Puig's dream. As restaurants closed, the supply of used cooking oil dried up, and people had less disposable income to spend on biodiesel conversions. It went from doing a car or two a week to one every few months, but that gradually just faded away with the economy. Did Naples biofuel fail because it was ahead of its time? I believe the vegetable oil movement for biofuel is actually a hundred years behind its time. Rudolf Diesel, the man who invented the diesel engine, was possessed by concepts of efficiency, and he never imagined centralized fuel sources. Back a hundred years ago, the concept was diesel engines could be run on local fuel grown in whatever local environment it was. John Puig didn't give up on his dream, he just changed direction. Today he runs an organic farm in Naples and tries to pass the sustainability ethic on to future generations. I'm the farm manager and educator at the Garden at Eden. So I operate an organic farm um, that is powered by recycling post-consumer food product waste and municipal tree debris to run an organic farm. And I work with children with autism from the Eden School. And yes, he still collects old fry oil to fill the fuel tank of his converted biodiesel-powered Mercedes-Benz. I believe that we're all accountable for our actions, and as we grow personally and spiritually, we feel a sense of responsibility to care for our planet for our children and grandchildren's sake, and I believe in promoting this. The same economic maelstrom that scuttled John Puig's dream launched the Bentons. Roy Benton Jr. and his son were in the construction and development industries. They began feeling the pinch when the housing market collapsed, taking the region's economy with it. They recall sitting around a campfire with some friends on a camping trip about five years ago. We were all talking about uh, the slowdown and maybe we should look at getting into some other uh, industry that wasn't uh, so much affected by the downturn in the economy. And somebody, one of us said, well, whatever it is, it sh probably should be something to do with going green. But that seems to be where the future is. Their background made them painfully aware of the problems with diesel fuel and the need to find alternatives. I'm a third generation contractor, my son's fourth generation. We've used millions of gallons of diesel fuel and we know how harmful it is to the environment and, and expensive and how we're so dependent on purchasing oil. We focused in on the biodiesel industry.
In theory, what the Bentons are doing is similar to John Pewig's modest one-car-at-a-time experiment, but on a vastly different scale. They are actually taking waste vegetable oil and grease and converting it to biodiesel. They're in the operating stages right now. Our estimated annual capacity is around 5 million gallons a year. Our processor is a multi-feedstock processor. It can handle waste vegetable oil, fish oil, animal fats, poultry fats, jatropa oil, all kinds of oil other than petroleum oil. The first stage will happen is a, a tanker truck will come with waste vegetable oil and we will accept it through that pump right there and it'll go into one of the feedstock tanks. As the feedstock is converted to biodiesel, it is piped four times back and forth between processing and filtering tanks inside and outside the plant. In a continuous 24-hour process, it turns out four batches for a total of 12,000 gallons a day. This is what we start with, waste vegetable oil from restaurants. This is what we end up with, 100% biodiesel which I run in my truck and it reduces carbon emissions by up to 70 percent. At 360,000 gallons, Benton says he has the largest fuel storage capacity in southwest Florida outside of the ports. Before the plant was even in operation, FL Biofuels had a steady customer. We were chosen to replace Lee County's petroleum diesel with biodiesel. Lee County will purchase initially 500,000 gallons of B100 a year, which we will blend to their specification and then use that in their diesel vehicles. Biodiesel may lessen our dependence on fossil fuel, but it isn't necessarily cheaper. Biodiesel usually runs parallel with petroleum diesel. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. but our agreement with Lee County, they will be able to purchase the biodiesel less than what they're paying for petroleum diesel today. Okay. John Puig said converting a diesel-powered car to run on vegetable oil and buying the filtering equipment can run between $2,000 and $6,000. FL Biofuels investment, including a half million dollar federal stimulus grant passed through Lee County, is slightly more than that. Our total investment with our upgrades have been around eight and a half million dollars. When it comes to raising money, however, the 800 pound gorilla in the room is Paul Woods and Algenol. In addition to the 170 million that Algenol has raised from the private sector, they also uh, received a $25 million grant from the Department of Energy and a $10 million grant from Lee County, all to be able to develop a partnership that furthered the goal of being able to come up with an alternative to fossil fuel. Algenol scales a bit different. We're trying to actually do this in a way to meet 15, 20, or 30 percent of this country's needs, a lot different than collecting restaurant oil. What impact has that investment had on Lee County? They've already spent most of that money building this lab with the help of uh, plumbers, uh, pipe fitters, uh, electricians. So they have provided a lot of jobs to the local workforce. We're probably talking to two to 300 additional jobs right here at the Algenol facility. Algenol has about 155 employees in total, around 110 or so are here on this site. About 60 to 65 of the people here at Algenol have PhDs. Our average wage, I think, is about $90,000 a year. And so, yeah, I think we're good for the local economy. As ambitious as Algenol's venture in Lee County seems, it is but the tip of the iceberg. Wood says it is a miniature prototype for larger algae to ethanol facilities all over the world. It's a prototype of a fully functioning commercial module. This is a research and development lab and facility first and foremost. As far as bringing the uh, ethanol to a viable commercial scale production, that will be done in other parts of the world. That goal of global expansion is already underway. 
our first partner actually um, is the son of the Corona Beer family and he bought more than 40,000 acres uh, with options for more uh, down in uh, Sonora, Mexico. But we actually are working with about 10 other partners who are doing site locations right now and they're looking at marginal land in their state or in their country and it's actually happening right now all over the world. Citing his charisma and tenacity, oilprice.com, a website focusing on oil and energy issues, placed Woods among the top five people influencing renewable energy in the United States. Paul will definitely pull this off. Not only is he a visionary, but he pays tremendous attention to detail. He researches very thoroughly any particular business that he ventures into. He has not only a passion, but he has the technological background in being able to make sure that this will come to fruition. Crucial to the algae to ethanol process is the rate at which Wood's specially selected algae, which is gathered from all over the world, can reproduce from just one single microscopic cell. What's fascinating about this container is this is more than 110 billion cells. That's more than every person who has ever lived on the planet since humans existed, just equivalent to one jar. So think, if I can double uh, from that one cell to two cell, to four cell to eight cell, it takes time to get up to the equal, the world's population. Those cells are nurtured and grown in six climatically controlled heat rooms. We can go from 45 degrees to 115 degrees and back to really emulate the different kinds of environments these algae could be deployed into. Uh, the heating and air conditioning units that supply these rooms are amongst the most complicated HVAC systems in the state, maybe the whole country. One of the question marks surrounding alginol is the price it has to pay for the carbon dioxide that it relies on to produce ethanol from algae. The way they make ethanol is by consuming carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is a fuel source, which is great because it takes it out of the environment. But the problem is it's an expensive fuel source. And so that's a cost of production. The price of alginol's ethanol will be completely tied to the carbon dioxide price. Because right now, when I tell you it's a dollar a gallon, a third of that is for us purchasing carbon dioxide at today's rate. Most everything that alginol does is brand new and has never been attempted before. Not just the technology, but even the equipment needed to put it to work. Wood said he already holds at least 10 patents with more pending. This is the machine that we have just started operating. Um, it'll produce one of these photobioreactor plastic bags in about two minutes. Considering it takes us half a day to make one right now, we really need to start automating this process if we're going to put 3,000 of them on the ground. Our partners, they want to put 300 million of them on the ground, so we're going to have to start learning how to actually automate this process and make it fast. Alginol ran into a roadblock with passage of a Florida law imposing additional layers of regulation and permitting on the operation. State officials were concerned that if Wood's algae escaped from the plastic bladders and got into the environment, it could reproduce and cause serious damage. Alginol has paid very close attention to demonstrating that the blue-green algae, which is the strain that they use here in this lab, is so pampered that if it were ever to get out into the natural environment, would die immediately or not be able to compete with other algae or other life forms in a watery environment. Eight studies now show that the algae are completely safe. They are not invasive. In fact, they don't have the characteristics that could make them invasive. The roadblock was eventually cleared and alginol's expansion resumed. But the delay cost Woods valuable time as he pressed to meet his self-imposed deadline. We really want to make a go of it on this site right now. So we've got a year to get this all built, another six months to have it running and operating. We want to have fuel grade ethanol ready for your car by the end of 2013 available on this site. The whole renewable fuel thing is the future. It's not the only step in the process of, of getting off our dependence on petroleum oil. 
It's just a small piece of the puzzle going forward. With what's going on right here, right now, the epicenter for the world with the research and development of algae to ethanol technology. 20 years from now, what I foresee is a safer world, greater food production, and also those motors that are go to the fuel pump are able to buy fuel at less than a dollar a gallon. What I would see would be a national commitment to get away from importing oil from uh, foreign countries. If we had that kind of national commitment, then it would be a broad approach to diversifying the types of sources of energy that we could use in transportation. I really believe it's been a, a wonderful journey with biofuel. Win, lose, or draw. We were doing what we believed. We were having fun and we were working to make the world a better place for the future. And if everything I do in my life can be that, I think it's a life well lived. I think the algenol process is definitely revolutionary and so yeah, we've got a lot of people around here trying to create a dream. The reality is, is if we can make under a dollar ethanol, we can make fresh water in an equal quantity to that ethanol or greater. And if we can consume carbon dioxide, we really are the only chance this planet has at managing climate change.